Man, I, I, I missed being with you last week, and, and I hope you missed us as much as we missed you. But here we are today, and what a great opportunity and a privilege the Lord has provided for us to be able to gather again on a wonderful Word-Centered Wednesday that we can walk through the Word of God to try as best as we can to not just explore it, but to explain it, to make it so clear that you'd have no question of concern about its accuracy or whether we're telling the truth. No, we seek to stand to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Amen. And I can tell you today that telling the truth out of the word of God does not always make people feel good. A lot of times it finds folk on the wrong side of the word of God, yeah. uh, but God isn't gonna change his mind. And what he said, he meant then and he meant it now. And it has increasingly become even more of a need. Uh, and as we get closer to Jesus' return, that need is going to get even greater. So I'm a firm believer that when you've got a church that is anchored in the word of God, yeah. that you've got a group of people, no matter how little or how large, that they can stand on the truth because they know the truth. And you can't stand up for a truth you don't know. Amen. And you cannot stand on a truth that you ain't aware of. Yes. And if you don't know, then it's possible that you didn't be tossed or even being tossed yes. like a wave that is so unsung by every wind of teaching. Yes, let, me, let me say early and then I hurry on to a word of prayer and we move into the lesson today. And when I think about where we are in this country, even when it comes to the church, about the word of God, I, I, I met some real concerns in terms of crossroads yeah. about a lot of stuff that's being taught and preached by so many that a lot of people put a whole lot of faith and trust in that it just ain't in the Bible. Yeah. That yeah. just ain't in the Bible. And so, as a friend of mine would say, don't make it up, look it up. Yeah. And when you look it up, you'll know it. Yeah. And you don't have to be lied to or misled and go to the right when you ought to go straight. Yeah. Even now, we thank you. Even now, we pray for clarity of thought and speech. Yes. I pray even for someone who needs to know Jesus and the free pardon of their sin. Help them to run to the cross and ask what must I do to be saved. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're looking at verses 8 to the end of the chapter, which is actually verse 13. So we've got, as you can see, a number of verses to work our way through. And we will be diligent and timely as much as we can. But let me since we were out last week and we would have completed the lesson last week that we are today, let, let me just for review purposes and reminder, let me just share with you from an overall summarized perspective, verse 1 through verse number 7. John opens up the letter writing as though he's speaking to a woman and to her children. However, in the Bible, the church has had a feminine, female connotation or state or shared identity, if I may. Uh, our church has been called the Bride of Christ. Uh, that has a feminine connotation. And what John is saying is that he's writing not necessarily to a female and her family, but he's writing to the church as a whole and to the members of it. Yeah. You with me? Yes. With that being said, he talks very early about the need to love each other. Yes. So critical. So very valuable. So very important. But then John also starts going back to talk about what it is that lays as the foundation for the church. Yeah, the church need to love each other. Uh, it doesn't matter how little or how large it is. 
everyone who's a part of the Christian family needs to be in a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Hello? But they also need to understand that love is the glue that holds us together. Amen. Um, we're not told to like each other. We're told to love each other. And everybody has their own personality, their own individuality. But when it comes to this matter of unity and oneness, our love seals us. But also, it's important that John goes back and he talks in verse number seven, if you look at it, where he makes it clear about there are not a few, but there are a lot of deceivers that have gone out into this age. They are circulating. And if they are out in this age, they are running up on people. They, they aren't just walking around you know, looking at the sky, how many clouds and, you know, the grass and the tree. No, no, that's not, no, 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 no. When he's talking about world, he's talking about the age that they live in. And I want you to think about this. He's already in the very first letter taught how important and extensively the need for them to be word-centered. Because there are those, and I want you to think about this who were part of the church who left and started believing some stuff that was circulating and they became disciples, not just students of it, they were also part of circulating these lies that were heresies, ungodly teaching. And so he writes to the church to warn it. You better watch out. You better be on guard. You better be careful about what you fall prey to. And they can make it sound so believable that you would almost be made to believe that what is taught at the church you attend, that it's wrong. I can't tell you the number of times. Let me say this real quickly. Um, how many times people have asked me, well, Pastor, why is it that what you teach that other folk ain't teaching? And I'm like, well, I can only speak for me yeah. and understand I'm not responsible for what other fellas, other teachers are saying. And let me say this, and we'll see it later, that he didn't identify them as preachers. He said deceptive teachers. And understand that every Sunday school teacher is just as responsible to God for the lessons that they stand up in the front of folk and say they are teaching. You got to be careful about what you repeat just because it's in a book. You need to dig. You are accountable. You are accountable when you stand up, open this book, and say, thus said the Lord. Not just the preacher. Not just the pastor. But any representative of the word of God. Let me say this. If you are repeating scripture. If you are supporting certain texts. You need to make sure you know what you're talking about. And we'll see later on how, how serious even the more that this is. And so what we seek to do again. Is that we seek to read the text. Look at a sort of commentary that is pulled out through research, through study, that helps to explain what the verse means as best as we can to do expositional teaching so that you will understand clearly what the word of God is saying. Verse number eight, look to yourselves that we lose not the, those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Understand that Satan's strategy is and always will be to deceive, to lie, to mislead, to fill with error. But also that the warning against false teachers was to watch yourselves. He's telling the church then, watch yourselves. The word of God, the calendar has changed, but the word of God is consistent. We got to watch ourselves. 
We got to watch what we're watching on TV. We got to watch what we're listening to on social media platforms. Okay, this is going to get good. When believers encounter a false teacher, in this case, one who denies Christ's humanity, they are to be on guard with the false teacher's lies or the arguments against Christian beliefs. Here's where, let me stop you for a second. Here's where the, the and ministers, when I talk about the church, I'm talking about the believers as a whole. Because it takes all of us individually to make up a body. How many of us know enough Christian doctrine, biblically, that we don't have to be misled? I'm convinced that in many instances in church life, people on Sunday morning, many, are coming to hear the word of God cut straight. Many want entertainment and not education. Yeah. Yeah. The emphasis and the importance of God's message is that the Christian is to be on guard against false teachings in their own lives. And so I, I thought about that and, and, and my thought gave birth to this question. So how would you know when false teaching or false practices happen? How would you know when you're being lied to by a false, you know, false teachers can be Sunday school teachers. Yeah, yeah. They can be Bible study teachers. Yeah. 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 They can be people who lead who are, who are led who lead our private studies, yeah. read, you know, studying books by folk that they never investigate to see what is their doctrinal stand on the basic tenets of Christianity. Uh I feel like I'm in a call out moment, but I'm going to reserve it. But how would you know? There's a lot of trust that takes place on Sunday morning that people largely hold those who teach Sunday school and those that preach. And even me that's teaching this lesson. You, you, I, you have a, a, a level of trust that I, I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah. Amen. You have a level of trust that I've done my homework. Uh -huh. You have a level of trust. I'm not just repeating something I got out of a book and it just sounds good to saturate the moment. No, no. That ain't happening. I do my homework yeah. because I'm responsible to God for what I say on his behalf. Every Sunday school teacher is speaking and teaching on God's behalf, not their own accord. Yes. Okay. Yes. See, see now, now when we start looking at this real serious, there's more than just what somebody signed up for. No, no, this is a serious assignment. Yes. And, and everybody aren't equipped to do it correctly because some people don't think of the assignment and take it serious. They just, well, I, you know, I was just asked to do it. I just do it. No, I'm not waiting. This is God's word. You are infecting and affecting the minds and the lives of people. Walk carefully. Yes. Be very serious about what the assignment calls for. As a preacher, yes. you got to be careful. Ain't just a matter of having some opportunity to get up and speak a word. No, well, how true is it? And doesn't meet biblical standard. And so when we stand up, we stand up where we are in the front of people who have a level of trust. Yes. They don't interview us and ask, show us where you got your information from. They, they don't ask, show me how you came up with that conclusion on that point that you made. No, no, they, they, they take what we say at face value. Yes. They, they, they. They, they believe that we know what we're talking about. Make sure you know what you're talking about. Yes. Make sure you ain't repeating something that ain't true when you don't know it's true because you didn't take the time to find out whether it's true or not. You are infecting and affect. Am I making sense here? Yes. I, yes. Hell over here. Yes. I, 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 I wouldn't go to a doctor who after Sister Pearson, he done sat, looked at my chart. And he said, well, you know, you know, bro, um, I, 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 I don't know what to tell you. Wait a minute. You are the person who's supposed to have studied medicine yeah. 
you have supposed to have gone through school. You are supposed, hello, come on. Oh, y'all ain't got no doctor. Hello, we put our trust in people. Many times we don't even ask them to ask us to show them their credentials. You know, show me your transcript. We don't ask that. We just take it at face value. Is it not a risk that we run on Sunday or Wednesday or whenever you are pulling up folk on Instagram and Facebook and some other places that you are taking at face value? You, 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 I, I, you just believe, I know they wouldn't lie to me. Yeah. Uh, when, in fact, they very easily could. Even in the name of the Lord. Yes. This is what, I, I hope you all are getting how serious this is. Because class, this is not child's play. Amen. Yeah. Would you know false teaching when you hear it? And the only way you're going to know something false is you got to know truth. Okay, let me, let me move on. I'm on the clock. And so you all have got to get out of here. And we're going to move it to that end. So next verse is verse number nine. The train of thought still moves. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine or the teaching of Christ does not have God. Yeah. Are y'all catching that? Yes. You can't teach against Jesus and have God too. Amen. You can't lie on Jesus and then tell the truth about God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, the teaching of Christ, he has both the Father and do you see the compliment here? Yes. Help, come on, talk to me somebody. You cannot have bad teaching about Jesus and be right with his daddy. Yeah. Look, if you will, at the lesson. Following this warning, John provides a way to identify false teachers. Watch this. First, he notes that those who do not hold to sound teaching are worthy of doubt. Absolutely. Let me ask this. What's the likelihood that somebody selling vacuum cleaners will come to your house, tell you they got a great product, and your question would be, let's plug it in and see how it works. Yeah. How would you feel if you say, oh, don't worry about it. Trust me, just take my word. Well, now I got to pay for this. Yes. And you want me to pay for something I have not seen perform yeah. and believe you when I don't know you? How many of us really don't know the folk we watch and listen to? Yeah. But we just believe that they ain't selling us bad vacuum cleaners. Yeah. John makes it very clear that if a person teaches something about Jesus which is seriously wrong, seriously incorrect, seriously goes against the Bible, they cannot be considered a genuine believer or, listen to this, or Christian. I really want you to let that sink in for a second. You cannot believe ungodly teaching and then say, I'm a Christian. Well, you could, but it won't stand under biblical scrutiny. There are a lot of folks talking about they're Christians. Uh, anybody can say they're a Christian. Donald Trump says, oh, I mean, excuse me, uh, uh, anybody can say they're a Christian. Hello, y'all. Come on, talk to me. Tree is known by the fruit it bear. Hello. Our lives are living letters. Hello. Yes. And the fact of the matter is, is that what we believe and know about Jesus Christ is front and center yeah. when it comes to salvation. You just can't believe anything about Jesus and figure that it flies all right off the page of God's word. Amen. Okay, I thought he had some children in here. Yeah. We need to understand. We don't just show up in Bible study, read the Bible just because... No, we are seeking to grow. Yes. And if I'm going to grow, I want to grow in truth and not in error. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Amen. True Christians may misunderstood or be made misunderstood, misunderstand, rather be ignorant of certain biblical teachings about Jesus. But those who completely misunderstand who Jesus really was or who teach against the true identity of Jesus on purpose, that's not an accident. 
are false teachers and they can't be considered real bona fide believers. Yeah. Amen. Hello. Yeah. This verse may also help those who wonder about people who have appeared to be strong Christians and then later on deny Jesus came in, came, is who Jesus is, and they have an off baseness in their faith. Yeah. Let me ask you this today. Let me pay attention. Is there anybody who could get you to reject the Jesus that you've been believing in all these years? No, 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 no. How much do you know about it that you could defend your belief as a Christian? Hello? Yeah. Oh, oh, see, this gets yeah. serious. Hey, hello? You got to know in order to stand correctly. Let me share it to you this way. Imagine Christian church John is writing back to that he's been preaching I don't know how long, teaching I don't know how long. And now he's away from them physically. If they are truly strong in the scripture, he admonishes, but would he have anything to worry about? No. He said, hmm. let's, let's talk about us. As long as we've been coming to church all these years, how well do you know the word of God that if it came down to it that you had to defend it, how good of a job would you do? Okay, I, I, I even, I even, I, I even, here it is, because I do this often. If I were to give you my Bible, yeah. or the one you're looking at, and if I were to ask you, show me where you place your eternal hopes when it comes to salvation, yeah. how well would you do? And there's always, there's always a silence that seems to come when that question is raised. I have yet to have heard an uproar where I got it, Pastor. Yeah. I, I know my body. I, I know I'm saved according to the word of God. Yeah. And I can show you according to the text. Amen. You ought to be able to have that level of stationed security. Yes. After all, you say, you know him. What can you tell me about him that you know? Yeah. You say you're saved. Yeah. Show it to me. Yeah. No, 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 I, I'm serious. Because on any given day, you're going to leave. And if you left today, you ought to know before the departure that I'm saved and I'm saved. Yeah. John writes to the church that because you have been under the word of God this long, yeah. you ought to know it. You've been coming inside of a church building all these years. How well do you know scripture? Hello? Amen. It's a very pertinent. Is it not a fair question? Yes, Absolutely. It, it would be just, how many of y'all in here got kids? Children. Okay. Uh, grandchildren. Okay. Would you? I, I don't think you'd have a problem if, if, your, if, your, if your child went to school every day uh, for a school year for 12 years. And at graduation, they couldn't even read their name on a diploma that it wouldn't bother you. Hello? Oh, yeah, sure. Some, some of y'all silence bothers me. Uh, before we even get to graduation, you checking to see how, fair, how well are you advancing. Let me ask you this. How well are you growing? How well are you advancing? It's more than just sitting in a church building, enjoying worship, but you ain't getting no better. It's more than just hearing good singing and quote unquote hearing good preaching and ain't nothing about you changing. Something wrong with that. We're not like people at the football game in the stands enjoying what's going on on the playing field. No, no. No, we 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 ought to know. You've been you've been in Christ this long. You ought to know. Yeah. 
You say you've been saved how long? You ought to know. Yeah. Amen. If somebody were to ask you, what is your name? You ain't going to say, well, give me two minutes and i get back with you. Yeah. No, you're going to, and if they ask your name, phone number, address, and some other stuff, bam, 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 bam. Same thing ought to be. When it comes to your knowledge of Jesus Christ and the teachings of Scripture, well, look at verse 10, because, I mean, he ramps it up. Yeah. Um, and, and there is what I'd like to, you, you might want to write on your, your lesson two words. Intent. I-N-T-E-N-T. -E I-N-T-E-N-T. -E and then intense. I-N-T-E-N-S-E. -E. Two words. Because they're right here. If there are any, come unto you and bring not the teaching, what you have been instructed. Don't receive them in your house. Neither bid them God speak. Don't even talk about God bless you. Think about that. Intent. It's right there in that verse. Don't you, don't you sense it? Yes. Then this is not accident. It's not that you're being rude. But the fact of the matter is, you know what they are bringing. It ain't that you're scared. You will not be swayed. Hello, somebody. But there's also a matter of intense here. There's a whole lot at stake. If you let them in and you don't know, you're like a sitting dog and he ain't gonna miss. You know, most times when people that are that have been indoctrinated, like the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons and some other groups, they've been so brainwashed yeah. that they know this stuff backwards and forwards and just in a matter of seconds yeah. they can throw out certain questions at you and they know right now whether you are strong or whether you are a good candidate to be converted to what it is that they want to bring in your house yeah. let's let's look at it because he builds on this teaching beginning from verse number seven through nine and the teaching that John refers to here is the one that Jesus came in real physical human form. Yeah. Believers must believe that Jesus walked earth as both divine and human. We call it the hypostatic union. Yeah. He was much God as he was man, as much man as he was God. Yeah. And to deny this truth is to deny a core aspect of the gospel. And so according to John, those who reject this truth will not to be extended. Watch this, any hospitality, no help, and no resources. Yeah. Because they are peddling a poisonous gospel. Yes. Hello. It ain't a matter of giving them a donation to get out your face. No. Okay. Uh, John commands, don't even open the door for them. Yeah. Is anybody catching this? Believers are not to associate themselves in any way with false teachers who deny the true identity of Jesus Christ. There's an intense warning here with an intention. Yes. Amen. You may not be able to combat them. You may not be as strong as you think you are. Yeah. And when they find out, they know how to subvert. Oh, so that's what your preacher teaches you, huh? Oh, so that's what your that, that's what your church well your church been teaching you wrong. Your church been your your, your church been misleading you. Oh, I, I hear I, I hear it a whole lot. People leaving sound Bible churches yes. to hook up with movements that are spurious teachings. Um, I, I was in the store just the other day. Um, can I tell them, Sister Pearson? All right, she said I could. Um, and mind my own business, had to go in there and get something. And I saw a brother, yeah. um, been knowing him for years, but I didn't know what I know now. Yeah. Um, and we got to talking real quickly, R.D., and um, he 
said, you know, he said, uh, uh, I listen, I listen to Kenneth Copeland all the time. I had to, I had to, you know, I had to, had to control that. I did a good job. I think y'all be proud. Um, and I had to constrain myself, but I couldn't stop my mind. I said, what did you say? He said, oh, yeah. He said, yeah, man, I listen to him all the time. And then he went on. I thought, that, you know, that was enough by itself. And then he went on to say, well, you know, you got to have a good mixture of word. I'm like, what? A good mixture of the word? Wait a minute, bro. You mean to tell me your pastor, your preacher, ain't teaching you enough that you got to have some other flavor, flavor in the mix? And the problem, and, and then I asked him, and I had to constrain myself. Uh, my loving mother was coming to the mic, and I said, no, nah, baby, I got this one. Uh, I, I, I said, uh, do you, have you ever studied his doctrine? And he got quiet. I said, did you not know he's part of the word faith movement? Have you ever stopped to even examine what they believe? Because they got some other fellas in there with him. Uh, Joel Osteen and uh, Cruffalo Dollar and T.D. Jakes and um, uh, the, the uh, yeah, yeah, I can't call her name right now. Uh, yeah, Paul White. Uh, and then uh, there's another one. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all catch me in a couple of weeks, I tell you. Here's my point. And I want you to, I want you to hear this. Uh, Kenneth Copeland is a false teacher of the word and faith movement. One thing that he teaches is that Jesus died spiritually. He also claims that if the physical death of Jesus was enough to save us, anybody could have died for our sins. And, and, and you going to you go you gonna listen to a cat I mean a, a, a person like that regularly? Look at what you're being indoctrinated with. You know, when I look at the state of the church today, I, I, I asked myself a question. What are churches being measured by today? How many folks show up? Who, who is it in the community that's got a name and who got a whole lot of money to come? Uh, how many people will fill up the sanctuary? What well, church has been measured by today? Hello? I, I, look, look, I, come on, because th th this is where we are. M many churches are being measured by how many folks are showing up, yeah. what kind of programs they got, yes. how socially active are they? A uh, whole lot of other stuff. The first thing Jesus came doing, he came preaching. Yes. Before he turned, before he had two fish and five loaves of bread, before he fed them physically, he fed them the word of God. Yeah. I ain't got no problem with it. In, in, I, I believe the church ought to have a level of social activism. I think, yes, church ought to be concerned about What's happening to people of color? Yeah. I believe the church ought to be concerned with making sure that the needs of people are met as best as they can physically. Yes. But that ain't our main calling. Our main calling ain't to have bouncy houses out in the parking lot. No, no. Our main calling is to instruct them yes. in the word of God. Okay, you yes. looking at me like that? And I want you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Make a left hand turn. Because you need to know the kind of times we're living in. I mean, we're living in times where a uh, lot, 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 lot of people are flocking to churches because they got good singing choirs and they got good social programs. Well, well what are they teaching when it comes to the Word of God? Because that's what's going to last. Amen. Oh, okay, I, I, I believe that. Yeah. I don't know what you believe. Yeah. The greatness of a church is not how many cars in the parking lot, how big the sanctuary is. The, side, the greatness, of, hello, the greatness of a church is not based on how much money they take in on Sunday. No. No. 
The greatness of a church is how well do you know God, the word of God, and how are you and Jesus doing? Yes. Is your life changing or are you stuck? Look at what he says in the last chapter that he writes to Timothy before he gets beheaded. In verse number two, he says, preach the word. Y'all still ain't calling. He's telling Pastor Timothy the primary anchor and foundation of the church is the preaching of the word of God. Hello everybody. Be instant and in season. Be prepared to do it at any time. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. But look at what verse number three says. For the time will come. It's already there. Where they will not endure sound teaching. But they will, after their own lust, what they want, what they want to hear, the kind of preaching and teaching they want, they know where to go find it. Because very little is being taught and preached about sin anymore. Uh-uh. Making folk feel good, warm and fuzzy. Living your best life. Oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, all that other foolishness. Um, and they're going to be turned away under lies. Yeah. One thing we seek to make sure that's done here that the word of God is paramount. Yes, sir. We ain't teaching ideas. Yeah. We ain't preaching and teaching opinions, yeah. philosophies, no, it's, it's God's word or nothing. And, and, and when I thought about it, I, I wonder, how has the truth of God's word gotten lost in the church today? Because it's gotten lost. Has it gotten lost from the pulpit? Has it gotten lost at Bible study teaching time? Has it gotten lost during Sunday school teaching time? God stay with it. You got to know it to teach it effectively. That's why we have tried to teach teachers how to dig, how to search, how to go into hello. We've taught them about sites. How to study the word of God. Amen. I believe in coming straight here. Amen. And I'm going to tell you this and I'm going to move on. A church that cuts it straight is a threat yes. to those that don't. One thing I don't do, I'll apologize for my preaching. Because I dig, uh -huh. I research, yes. I study. Yes. Same ought to be for every teacher. Yes. Don't settle for one. Dig. Yes. There's too many resources yes, to overlook and not take serious. Every preacher yes. ought to be prepared. H hello in here, everybody. Because we're living in a day, yes. Paul said, watch this, and I'm done. They're being tossed. No stability. Yes. Any and everything gone. Yes. We don't heard so much foolishness and garbage. Yes. Second wind blowing. What, what, what happened to the first? first. Uh, reach up and grab it. Where's it at? Yes. Name it and claim it. You are, you ain't, you're the head and not the tail. What are you talking? I'm not some animal. Yes. Have you taken text out of, you know, I speak it in the, you speak what? Yeah. I speak like, if you, if you got it like that, go to the hospital. If some folk want to leave, okay, see, yeah. you can't, you know, you got a problem with that. You say, yeah, well, you're making fun of me. No, I'm just trying to tell you. If it's what these folks are saying, how come they aren't cleaning out nursing homes? Yes. How come they aren't cleaning out hospitals? Yes. 
I speak life. You, you do what? If you don't know, somebody can have you run around to you with some oil in your pocket, greasing folk down, putting your hands on folk that you ain't got no business, yes. calling yourself something that you ain't, yes. putting a title on you that you ain't nowhere near it. Yes. Okay, uh, uh, look at verse number 11 and we're going to be soon getting out of here. He that bideth, he that biddeth him God's speed. Is a partaker of his evil deeds. Wait, wait, wait a minute. So, so then what you're saying, John, is that you're telling the, the believers, don't let them in your house. Yes. Don't let them try to even convert. They, look, they're coming in, not just for some momentary Bible study. You know, if it's that good, tell them to come to your church and study the word with you. Yes. You ain't got to go to no kingdom hall. Yeah. You ain't got to go to the Mormon spot. Tell them, you go to a church. Tell you what, bring yours, I'll bring mine, and we'll sit together and we'll hear what some real teaching is like. Yes. <laughs> he said, don't even, don't even ask the Lord to bless them. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Wow. wow. That sounds hard, don't it? Well, if you know it's wrong and it's against God's word, how can you expect God's God to bless what contradicts him? Yeah. Many of you all know I'm not a eater of that S noodle. You know that should you invite me to go eat, I'm not going to order it because I don't have taste for it. Let me ask you this. Are you making accommodations for a taste you are not ever have? Yeah. Or are you believing some things that biblically aren't proved in scripture? I mean, you got to decide today what kind of Christian are you going to be? Uh -huh. You got to decide today are you going to really believe God's word and know it and stand on it? Yeah. Or Anything that kind of comes and goes and sounds believable. Yes. But more, can I take them back for a second? Yes. Paul writes the letter to Timothy. Yeah. Don't you hear John saying the same thing Amen. in the letter that he writes? Yes. You understand, John wasn't around when Paul wrote to Timothy. Yes. But isn't it amazing how God's word has a way of meeting at and intersecting yes. in places? With a message of be on guard. With a message that says be careful about listening. Be careful about tuning in to that. Yes. And some of you probably, but you know, if you're thinking I'm just, I ain't jealous of nobody. And it ain't a matter of I think I'm all that. No, 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 no. I got a responsibility yeah. to tell you the truth. It's on you to decide whether you want to keep going back and drinking from bad water or eating. You know, I grew up Sister Brown uh, in a community and my, my mom and them my mom and them, they, they, they knew they, 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 they knew some people. Yes. Uh, they knew some clean folk and they knew some nasty people. Yeah. And I remember one time I, I wanted to go over to the house and meet Sister Dawson and she said you ain't going over there. And I said, why not, Mom? She said, because they nasty. Yeah. Yeah. But not only that, you ain't going over there to eat. You end up getting sick. Yeah. And then when you come back here, I got to nurse you to health. Yeah. Oh, yeah. how many folks are tuning in to sights and sounds? Yeah. Getting bad stuff only to come back to the church sick. And need the pastor to help them to get well. How, how many times is there not combat between pulpit and pew? Yes. Because Jack Led Jones said this, uh -huh. and then the pastor said that, well, you know, uh, they, 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 they ain't on the same page. No, right and wrong ain't on the same page. Truth and error ain't on the same page. But if you don't know, you can easily be misled. By anything that sounds, it's a lot of folk that sound credible. Yes. 
Just check out their credentials. John says, don't even ask the Lord to bless them. Wow. Yeah. Well, then there's verse number 12. Uh, man, we're doing good today. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't telling you to be nasty to nobody. It's not, it's not what I'm saying. Amen. But, but I, let, let's just talk for a second. Can I just use an illustration? I'm always in an illustrative mindset. Uh, how many of y'all here this morning? Oh. All right. Okay, very good. Okay. If, if I were to, uh, how many of y'all went to math class? Math? Math, M-A-T-H, math class. Yeah. You know, I know you didn't like it much, but. You did, you know, you, you did have it as part of your curriculum. Exactly. Amen. Um, if I were to stand up and tell you, two plus two equals five. Okay, I'm going to try one more time. Some of y'all are looking like. Okay. <laughs> two plus two is five. Would I have anybody to believe me? Sister Smith, I know you love me, baby. Wouldn't you join in with me? Nope. She got that look like, mm-mm. Hey, about to happen. Why won't you? Why won't, why, I mean, why, why won't you? It's not true. How do you know? Because you know. Because you know. Because you know. You've been taught. You've learned it. How well do you know this? I, I mean, you, you need to know. Yes. Don't just wait on me to tell you. Yeah. You need to read it for yourself. Amen. Okay. Because yeah. if not, <clears throat> yeah. you can be deceived. This is, think about this and, and I'm going to move on. Why does John say to the church, don't fall for it. Is there a warning? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Think about this. If there were those that were showing up at the church where John pastored and preached and they left sound teaching to embrace a lie, yeah. who's the next one up? Who else is next? To start doubting. Yeah. We ain't being preached and taught correctly. They, they tell them the truth over there. You know, I, I've lived, I've lived a long time. I've lived a long time, Brother Earl. Yeah. And, and people didn't, people meant well. Unfortunately, many of them just didn't know. Pastor, I went and joined this church and I, 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 I just got saved. I, I don't have poker face, as you can see. I, don't, I know you wouldn't ask me to play on your team because I'd give it away. But there's some things that ought to trigger your thought. Yes. That if you were part of a church family, Bible-believing church, why did you leave it in the first place? Yeah. And then why did you go somewhere else running to, looking for what? If, if Jesus is across the street over there, how come he ain't on this side? Yeah. There are a lot of folks leaving churches for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. And there are some folks who are listening to other folks who influenced them yeah. for all the wrong reasons. This is what's going on here. John is saying to them, you ain't got to swap, trade in what you have. You need to know it. And you need to stand on it. Look at what he says in verse number 12. And we got... Praise the Lord, 10 minutes. That's a long time for me. <laughs> Having many things to write unto you, 
I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come to you. I want to do this up front. I want us to have a face-to-face -face meeting. I want us to be able to look at each other face to face that our joy may be full. Every, every Wednesday when we have prayer and Bible study, the greatest joy is to be able to look at each other one more time. Okay. Okay. I get excited when I see the sun. Every Lord's Day, when I see the saints come in the sanctuary, my heart is made happy. Because we get to fellowship, we get to worship, we get to praise God, we get to grow in the word together. Okay. Hello and here's somebody. We ain't just showing up because it's ritualistic or tradition. Or we've been doing this since we were two years old. Oh no, 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 no! I've been with it. I, I've been, do, I, I've been, I've been saved a long time. Can I talk to you for a second? Yes. Anybody that been saved longer than ten minutes? Yes. Okay. Amen. Hey. Over two years. Yes. Ten years. Yes. Hello. Yes. And, and and my prayer is that the the more you gather. Under the same roof yes. to worship God and to fellowship with the saints, that this is beyond just what you do on Sunday. Uh uh. No, 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 no. There's a connectedness. Yes. There's relationship that we have one with another. Yes. Surely, if we tell each other we love each other, we ought to love each other enough to want to be with each other in worship. Paul, I mean, John says here that I want to see you face to face. That, that, that when I don't see you, I miss you. Yes. That it ain't enough to stay home. I want to see you show up. Yes. Is that your heart's desire today? That I, I, I want to be around Sister Lucy Bell on Sunday. Yes. I want to see her one more time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, life is so limited, so short, yes, and none of us know how much of it we have. Amen. It ain't a matter of a scare tactic, but you know, folks that you love, you love being around. You want to hear the voice. Hello, I, I do. Yeah. I love hearing y'all's voice. I hope y'all love hearing mine. Yes, sir. Lord, have mercy. Yes, sir. I know y'all ain't heard nothing on the other end, did you? Yes, so I'm gonna give it one more try. I love seeing the folk I love lead and lead and get a chance to catch vision with. And I pray that they love seeing me. I, you know, come on back in the evening. Maybe they're going to be a little bit louder. This is not a matter of tradition. I'm not going to church ain't some tradition I hold. You know, I, I, used to, I, I used to go because I was made to go. You know, kind of remind me Y'all remember when your mama put that toothbrush, tooth, toothpaste on the toothbrush? Man, she acted like she was a jackhammer. <laughs> you know, you couldn't wait till she finished. Yeah. And at first, you really didn't know the value of it yeah. until you got older. Yes. Amen. It wasn't a matter of removing bad breath. It was a matter of sustaining what you use. Y'all yes. still ain't catching what I'm saying. I've been going to church a long time. And I know the value, been knowing it for a number of years, why I gather with the saints. Yes. Why I gather to hear the singing in the sanctuary. Why I look forward to hearing the word of God. Because yeah. yes. there's nothing better. Nothing. There are no substitutes. Nothing will replace it. And you know, anytime you are away from worship, you ought to miss. Because you miss. Yeah. Yeah. Any of you all have children? Any of y'all got a, at least one buddy, one friend? Maybe I go to friends levels. You know. 
You ever notice how when you ain't talked to them in a long time, how your heart yearns just for yes. them? Even as, hey, how you doing? Yeah. You know, I'm doing fine, child. How about you? Doing all right with the help of the Lord. And then you get on the phone. Something that settles your spirit on the inside. Yeah, yes, sir. You know, on Sunday morning, the question is, is there a word from the Lord to show yeah. you? Yeah. And I don't want to miss it. And John is saying to them, I can't wait yeah. to be in your company one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you're hearing for when you gather for worship? That I, I just don't feel fulfilled until yeah. I'm with fellow believers. Yeah. And then that 13th verse, and we'll be done. And I got five minutes, I believe. The children of Thy elect sister greet thee. And if you notice, there's one word that is at the end. Yeah. And it's the word amen. Amen. So be it. Yes, sir. So be it. Yeah. Yeah. Show enough, show enough. This is true. Yeah. Well, uh, final verse of John chapter 2. I'm sorry, 2 John. It's a very brief signature. He says, children uh, refer almost certainly to believers with John in his current location. We aren't sure if John is with a few Christian friends or an entire congregation, but he is clear, clearly in touch with some that are of the Christian community. And this is in contrast to when he wrote the book of Revelation that he was alone on the Isle of Patmos. Those fellow believers were spiritual family with the recipients of John's letter. Yeah. They are spiritual family. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's what the church is. Yeah. Family. Yes. Amen. Amen. Spiritual family. Different backgrounds, yeah. different experiences, but we got one Jesus yeah. that keeps us connected. And so, John's using familiar or family language for believers in this location and those that are receiving his writing. And so, these fellow Christians send greetings, which are simple, positive blessings to those that they could not visit in person at the time. Yeah. We got telephones. We ought to call and say, hey, just want to let you know, I was thinking about your mission. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because you don't know when the day is coming. You're going to need a call yes. for somebody to encourage you. Miss hearing your voice today. Yes. Pray you're doing all right. I pray that this lesson has been of great help to you today. My, my prayer is that you know him and not just his name only. But you've got a growing, thriving relationship yes. with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know for sure. Yeah. I want to say to you today, if you're not part of a growing church family, yes. I know of one. Yes. And facts about it, yeah. I know of the best one yeah. on Brown Street. Yeah. So easy. Yeah. 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 Great congregation. I didn't say the building. No, no. No, because no, this building can be turned into a bingo hall or community theater. The building houses the body. The church's greatness is not based on where it worships or what it worships in. The greatness of the church is anchored in who does it worship. Praise God today. Next week we won't have our study but I'm looking forward to seeing you in a few days after that. Amen. And we will be in the third letter of John. Amen. And I pray that you will read ahead. It's only 14 verses. Amen. I'm going to challenge you to read it at least 10 times. Like, yeah. 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 I want you to know it so well that you can almost teach it to me. Facts about it. Give me a call. 330-369-2920. Yeah. 
Love you, appreciate you. And to my buddy and my dear friend, we are man. You know, I love you and appreciate you. And, and thank you for allowing the good people that are part of your post to come on board. I want to thank Sister Micah. I want to thank Sister Valerie Johnson. I want to thank Sister Gore. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank Brother Enzo Cabela Mason. I want to thank everybody that's coming to my feeble mind that yeah. make the time. Thank you, Rachel, for being on part of our, our telecast today. Anybody else, Brother Moore, you can help me with? Uh, that's it, Pastor. That's it? I believe so. All right. Sounded like what Bugs Bunny said. <laughs> that's all, folks. That's all, folks. All right. Thank you, Lord, for our time. Yeah. Thank you for your word in advance. Yeah. Save even now. Mm -hmm. Jesus' name we pray. Amen.